The plague was once the most dreaded illness in history. It could cause hundreds of millions of deaths in apparently unstoppable worldwide pandemics and leave sufferers with horrifying signs like blackened skin and painfully enlarged lymph nodes. The medical professionals who treated plague patients in 17th century Europe dressed in a mask like a long beak of a bird and covered themselves from head to toe. This outfit has since acquired a terrible connotation. A misperception regarding the nature of the deadly illness was the cause of the beaked plague masks. The bubonic plague, pandemic that recurred over Europe for centuries, was prevalent during that time, and cities affected by it employed so-called plague doctors to treat both wealthy and impoverished citizens with what they believed to be medicine. These doctors witnessed wills, conducted autopsies, and prescribed what were thought to be protective mixtures and antidotes against the plague. Some of them even performed these procedures while donning beaked masks. Charles Delorme, a physician who served the medical requirements of numerous European royals in the 17th century, including King Louis XIV and Gaston d'Orléans, the son of Marie de Medici, is typically given credit for the garment. He described an ensemble consisting of a goat leather helmet and gloves, trousers attached to boots, a shirt tucked in, and a coat coated in fragrant wax. Additionally, plague doctors carried a stick with which they could prod or ward off sufferers. According to Delorme, plague doctors' headgear was especially peculiar. They wore spectacles and a nose mask that was half a foot long, shaped like a beak, filled with perfume with only two holes, one on each side near the nostrils. But that can suffice to breathe and carry along with the air. One breathes the impression of the herbs enclosed further along in the beak. The plague doctor became a mainstay of Italian commedia dell'arte and carnival celebrations, even though plague doctors donned these costumes throughout Europe. It is still a well-liked costume today. However, the intimidating outfit served a purpose other than being a morbid fashion statement. It shielded the doctor from miasma. Prior to the discovery of the germ theory of disease, doctors thought that the plague plague could spread by causing an imbalance in a person's humors or bodily fluids. Nosegays, incense, and other perfumes were popular during the time because it was believed that strong, sweet scents could both protect the wearer and fumigate plague-ridden places. Physicians who treated plagues used theriac, a mixture of over 50 plants and additional ingredients such as powdered viper flesh, cinnamon, myrrh, and honey, fill their masks. Lorm reasoned that the mask's beak-like design would allow the air to be sufficiently permeated by the protecting herbs before the air reached the doctor's lungs and nostrils. Actually, flea bites, contact with contaminated fluid or tissue, and inhalation of infectious droplets from sneezing or coughing individuals with pneumonic plague are the ways in which Yersinia pestis bacteria spreads from animals to humans. Before the cause of the plague was finally discovered, three horrifying pandemics ravaged much of Asia between 1894 and 1959. The third pandemic, which devastated much of Asia, the plague of Justinian, which killed up to 10 10,000 people a day approximately in AD 561, and the Black Death, which killed up to a third of Europeans between 1334 and 1372, and continued with sporadic outbreaks as late as 1879. In the end, the attire and techniques of the plague doctors had little effect. The medicinal approaches of early modern plague doctors, however, did little to prolong life, relieve suffering, or effect a cure, according to historian Frank M. Snowden. Even though plague doctors were easily identifiable, their costumes costumes didn't actually offer any protection against the disease until the development of the germ theory of disease and contemporary antibiotics. 